I'm going to show you guys how to generate the most beautiful and stunning images that give you the most control out of any tutorial you've ever seen on YouTube. There's tons and tons of YouTube tutorials on how to do mid journey. And I think all of them are too complicated and I'm going to break it down and make it very simple for you guys. Now I want to show you guys an example. This is my octopus. We're going to jump into a few different images. I'm going to show you guys how to make images like this, show you guys how to make images like this, like this, like this, like this and like this. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's my face. How incredible is that? I'm going to show you guys how to generate images like this. And the way that I'm going to do that is we're going to do that through the advanced prompting training that I have for you guys today. I'm going to break this down in five prompting steps. There's five different prompt frameworks that you need to know about. You probably haven't heard about. You're probably only using one or two of these. I want to make sure you know about all five. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first one is the basic prompt. Second one is the beginner prompt. Then you have your expert prompt, your multi prompts and your permutation prompts. That's what I'm going to cover today. We're going to go deep into all of these. So the common problem that I've seen is you want to get the most accurate and custom images out of mid journey in the least amount of prompts as possible. And that is something that I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out. I've done hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of prompts now, and I want to try to get one prompt to master the one image that I want the first time, instead of having to do it three, four, five times and regenerate images and doing different versions, I wanted to make that simple for you guys. So the solution I created was this five-step training that's gonna show you exactly how to do that. All right, so there are three examples of prompt levels for Mid Journey. You have your basic prompts, your beginner prompts, and your advanced prompts. The basic prompts are the ones that I see most people using, a greenhouse on a hill right? With the aspect ratio of 16.9. That's about the standard stuff I see. Then you get into the beginner prompts, which it gets a little more complicated. You start adding in some stylizing, maybe some negative prompts, things like that. And this is where I started making really cool images and having more control over the images that I generated. And then the last one is the advanced prompts. This is where I've been able to step it up another level. If you wanted advanced prompting training, you're not going to find anything better than this. All right. So here's your basic prompts template. This is what most people are using, which is your forward slash imagine a cinematic scene. You get your subject, your action, and then and you're seeing with the aspect ratio of 16.9. Okay, let's use an example. Let's see what that actually looks like. So you have forward slash imagine beautiful mountains in the winter at the Swiss Alps of aspect ratio of 16.9. Let's see what that looks like. Nice image. It has its place. It has its use. There's a good reason for using an image like this and using a basic prompt if this is all you need. If you just need a pretty much a stock image that doesn't give you an exact place where you don't want anything custom in the clouds, you don't want anything custom in the sky, you're not really specific about what you want, you just want a general image of a mountains, beautiful mountains, you got it, right? It has its place. It's important to still know and use this every once in a while when you need it. Then I took this image and I used this as a seed, which I can show you guys how to do the seed here in just a minute. Make sure I don't forget that. This is an example of an expert prompt. I wanted to show you the opposite of it. A lot of control over the sunset, the mountains, the location, the water, the city, everything that I have inside of here. I have a little town inside there. This is what I was looking for. This is something I wanted to have more control over and show you guys what a beautiful image would look like. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. So a professional cinematic scene of a city in Switzerland with the two colons, which we're going to get to here in just a few minutes. Sunset, snowy mountains, cinematic lighting shot on a Fuji Pro 400H extreme long shot, ultra realistic, hyper detailed, extremely well made, expansive landscapes, stylized of 1000, which is really important. Uh, aspect ratio of 16.9 with an image weight. IW, you can see here, dash dash IW of two. So I brought it all the way up. And then you can see my seeded image, 352-371-6977. You can see here, that is the seed for that image. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that here in just a second. Here's another example of a basic prompt, or actually of a beginner prompt of what I did on an octopus. Right, I wanted to have, I actually did a Pixar themed octopus, and this was the prompt for that. You can see here, giant purple octopus, expansive landscapes, top front view, cinematic Pixar, 32K, extremely well made, white background. It didn't nail it 100%, but some of the images that I had of the four that it gave me did hit it high, and then I had a stylized of 200. Let me go over here real quick and show you guys how to seed an image. So if you want to seed an image, what you're going to do is you're going to come up to this, like this is a good image. I could use this as an example if I wanted to use this. I'm going to go ahead and hit add a reaction. You're going to find your little envelope. So you can type in envelope, right? You're going to hit this little envelope guy right here. Then you're going to click on it and guess what's going to happen. You're going to get something in your inbox. What's going to happen here is you're going to actually want to probably either go to your mid journey bot. There we go. Let's see, this is the seed image. This makes it really easy to find. If you just go over to Midjourney Bot, you can see it in your inbox, but it's better to just go over here. I just copy this and I can use this in my prompts going forward. If I come back here, you can see here, I have pasted this. Let me go here, type in seed. And you can see here, I use this seed image here. Let me just go back and show you where I first used it. 
So I use the Swiss Alps. And look, I put seed right here at the end of this. So this is a really important aspect of using seed images. If you wanna actually create an image that is based off of an existing image, you wanna use the seed. So that is a little bit more of an advanced feature, advanced trick, but this is something you should definitely be using. So getting to the beginner prompt, I showed you guys this one. Let me show you another example. Here's a BLT. Whew, looks so delicious. You got some dill over there on the right with the board, that really cool lighting and motif with the wine glass behind and the candle, just overall, uh, absolutely stunning image uh something i want to eat for lunch today i love blts who doesn't love a blt all right so this is what this was one of the gourmet deli blt sandwiches with a fancy sourdough bread on a board uh in the style of tokina uh at x 11 to 16 millimeter with an f-stop of 2.8 pro dx2 with the dark maroon and light green pole Polish folklore motifs, Norwegian nature, layered surfaces, rim light, layered texture, aspect ratio of 16.9 with a chaos of 20. Now chaos, I showed you guys this. I'm going to show you guys more in depth. You can do chaos from all the way from zero, all the way up to hundred. The chaos actually impacts the image a lot and can make it really weird. So we're going to go deeper into that here in just a minute. Stylized of 600. So you can go from zero to a thousand or 100 to 1000. I went with 600 and it makes a big difference depending on what stylized you use style of raw and then the negative prompt of dash dash no berries look at this that is my face on a character i made i'm going to show you guys how to put faces your own faces onto these characters at towards the end of this so make sure you hang with me if you guys want to learn how to do this stick with me till the end and i'll show you guys how to do this but this was the prompt i used and i got my face in here but i had to generate the guy first and this is how i did it award-winning photography of an entrepreneur in his 30s with dark red hair dreadlocks pointing up to the sky wearing a black shirt hyper detailed expertly executed details stylized of 1000 which is a really good stylizing that gives you the best stylizing you could possibly get out of this aspect ratio of 169 which is like the size of my screen here and then the style of raw Going into this one, this is a product photography mock-up, absolutely gorgeous. I have a redheaded little girl because I'm a redhead and I wanted to create a mock-up of it. She's got really bright hair. You can adjust this inside of your prompting, but I want to show you guys what this prompt looks like. So fashion mock-up, you want to start with that. You're going to have genre, lifestyle, emotion, cute redheaded five-year-old girl. So it could be 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 30-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old, right? Be a blonde. It doesn't have to be a redhead. It doesn't have to be a five-year-old. You can change whatever you want in there. White t-shirt can be a black t-shirt, yellow t-shirt, green t-shirt, texture and details of the clothes, the redheaded five-year-old. Then you have your aspect ratio of 16.9. This is an example of a beginner prompt. Now, if you want to change it up, you want to do actual vehicle, right? There's so many different use cases for these. So I wanted my favorite truck, which is the GMC Denali truck. This was specifically the AT4. You can see here it's in the cayenne red. So you need to do your research, know what factory colors the GMC makes or whatever vehicle you're trying to get makes and so you're using the right colors and it showed up exactly the way I wanted it to and this was a cinematic scene with expansive landscapes here's the prompt award-winning photography pretty good I would say it's pretty accurate of a cayenne red 2023 dually GMC Denali 3500 AT4 HD truck with a scenic background and cinematic now it missed the dually part which is what I want I want a dually so I have to redo this prompt if I wanted to but I was really happy with that image I thought it was really good aspect ratio of 69 version 5.2 and in the style of raw, this is another really good beginner prompt example. Now we get into the advanced prompts. I want to show you guys, this is where you're going to kind of get your mind blown. Now you have a Matt Ford slash imagine a cinematic scene from a year of a movie, the movie genre and the movie name, what shot type. And I'm going to show you all the shot types that they have. You're going to put your subject, your scene and your action shot on a cinematic camera. What kind of camera is that? Like I showed you guys in the beginning the Fuji camera film directed by who is it directed by what's the emotion. What's the lighting, aspect ratio, what's the stylizing? I only did 100 versus 1,000 and an image weight of 0.5. So you can go from zero all the way up to two. And you can do 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. You can just adjust this image weight that fits your needs. But this makes a big difference of making images look the same and very similar to each other when you use those different image weights. And then version 5.2. Here's what I got. I just can't help but look at this one. There's just something about this image that just totally grabs my eye, something that I just can't stop looking at. Absolutely gorgeous. This The crystal clear quality of this image just blows my mind. And even this one on the bottom left is, is really beautiful too. I mean, they're all great. You can't go wrong with any one of these. And this is the prompt that I used for these. So a cinematic scene from Dances with Wolves, one of my favorite movies, like top three movies. 1990 was the year. It's a Western. Dances with Wolves, close-up shot. So this is really important. You're going to see these different shots that I'm going to show you guys. Beautiful Native American young woman staring at a camera. Shot on a Sony Sonalta cinematic camera. 
film directed by Kevin Costner, happy cinematic lighting, dramatic lighting, backlit, aspect ratio of 69, stylized of 750. I didn't go all the way up to 1,000. Look how good the quality was. I put an image weight of 0.2, so I wanted to see. I didn't want too heavy of an image weight on there. And then I did version 5.2, which is important. They have 5.1, 5.0. You can mess with the versions. I like to use the most recent version with a style of raw. So this is really important. If you love what you're learning so far, drop a comment down below, introduce yourself, let me know who you are. I hope you're getting a lot of value of this already. I've already showed you the basic, the beginner, and now the advanced prompt, and we're only gonna go deeper. We're only a few minutes in, we're gonna get deeper than that. This is an image I showed you. I'm gonna show you guys here at the end. I told you how to put your face into an image. This is an image of my client right here on the left. This is Haley, and I added her into an image that I created, and I'll show you guys the prompt. Here's another one of Christy. This is an image of her. I was able to get her face on here. I can adjust the skin tone if it doesn't match exactly her skin tone in Photoshop. It's pretty easy to do, but overall, this is really neat. So what I did is an award-winning photography of an attractive blonde-haired woman with blue eyes and a tie-dye shirt standing up in a commercial cannabis greenhouse. Eye-level shot. This is for House of Jane, one of my biggest clients. Shot on a Sony Sonalta camera. Moody lighting, smiling and happy. You can see they were both smiling and happy. Highly detailed, moody lighting, anamorphic style, aspect ratio of 69. I brought the stylized all the way up to 1000 with a version 5.2 in the style of Ra. Here's a logo mock-up. So you can see here, I wanted to really go heavy on this and see what I could produce, uh, messing around with some of the image weights and some of the stylizing. And you can see here, the image weight of two, so I brought it all the way up to the max. So the image weight really just customized and, and added a lot to it. And this is for an award-winning vector logo for an accounting company. Notice where I put the colons. Again, I want you to pay attention to these colons and where I'm dropping these colons at. This is the two colons after there. I ended it there and I put black and white logo. Flat design, minimalism, Sagi Habib style, designed in Adobe Illustrator, white background, aspect ratio of 16.9, stylized of 500, with an image weight of 2, and version 5.2 with a style of raw. Here's another version of it. This is a lot more simple, a lot more of a flat design. A couple of these have shadows on them, but much more of a flat design. All I did was take out the image weight out of there. I took the stylized out of there, and it just kept it very, very simple. So sometimes you need to pull this stuff out to keep it very simple. You can see here, this is another image I created. Absolutely gorgeous. This is another image I created. Notice how quick, how much these look alike. There's a reason for that. I put the image weight of two on both of these and a stylized of 750 on both of these. So this is a very similar image. And see here, I put the colons again. I really want you to pay attention to these because I'm going to get to these in a few minutes. All right, here's another good image. Now, all I did on this image is I changed the image weight. I went from two down to 0.5. So let's go back. So two. 0.5 and I went from stylized of a thousand from stylized 750. So I just increased the stylizing and I dropped the image weight. All right, so now let's go to the next one here. This is where I get into the advanced prompting framework, but specifically this first piece is specifically for clothing. So if you want to do a product mock-up, any kind of mock-up, this is what you're going to be using. This is the advanced prompting template specifically for clothing. I pulled this. I don't even remember where I got this from. I think I saw this in a discord group or somewhere in some sort of a training, but this is a really good way to create product mock-ups. Amazing, amazing way to lay this all out. It goes really detailed from the, the type of t-shirt position of it, the mock-up design showcasing in high resolution and a quality fabric subtle shadow effect, black t-shirt, so you can change that out. You can pick it black t-shirt, white sweater, right? You can switch out those keywords there. It's displayed on a sand background. Actors, you can put actors in there if you want to. Location, you can change the location type. I put outdoor setting, you can put indoor, you can put studio, all the different things you can put in there. Camera model, again, you're gonna see all the camera models here in just a minute. Camera lens, what kind of camera lens? So this is a 50 millimeter f, point f stop of 1.2, special effects with soft lighting, and then tags. These are key in doing these product mockups. So product mockup photography, fashion, stylish. Again, you can put t-shirt in there. That's kind of just an example. Mockup design, high resolution, high quality shadow effect in a beach background. You can swap out that beach background for a forest background, for a black background, for a white background. There's so many different things you can do. Aspect ratio, style of 5.2, style of raw. All right. So getting into the advanced prompting framework even more, you should probably go back and watch my previous video where I've shown you the beginner one, but I added a new one here. We have now number four, which is a cinematic scene. So you got award-winning professional expert and then a cinematic scene. 
These are really key to make sure you add one of these two to the beginning of your prompt. Second stop, second part of your prompt is gonna be what kind of prompt is it? Photography, illustration, graphic design, vector. You wanna know what image type you wanna create. Is it artwork? Vector illustration, is it a sketch? Is it a pencil drawing? Is it a billboard design? Whatever that is, you wanna make sure you specify in there. I added in number 16, which is now product mockup, which I think is gonna be very, very common for people to use mid journey to create product mockups. It's so easy and it does a really good job. All right, so the next step here is your prompting description, your subject, your action, and your scene. I've updated this. This is really important, subject, action, scene. You can add whatever details, what they're wearing, green hat, black hat, whatever it is, depending on what it is, green race car, red race car, white race car, whatever you want in there. And this is gonna be really fun. And I'm gonna show you a little trick here in a few minutes that you're gonna wanna hang tight for. This is gonna show you how to create, if you're doing like wearing or you're doing some sort of what we call um, permutation prompt, you can change this up. So it could be white shirt, black shirt, red shirt, and you can create multiple different images. So I'm gonna show you guys that here in just a few minutes. Art style. So now we have the different art styles. I've covered this before. You guys can add your own. You can do Michael Goddard, whatever you want, but these are some really good options for you. I'm gonna give you guys a link down in the description to this entire presentation, this Google Slides document. You guys can use this on your own and you guys will have the full download of this expert prompting guide training. All right, so stylized effects, pretty much the same as before. I don't have time to cover all this because I want to keep this video a little bit shorter so it doesn't go long-winded, but you can see here a lot of really good options for you on the stylized. That's going to be the next piece of your prompt. The next spot is what I wanted to talk about. This is your shot type. This is what I feel like is going to give you a lot more control over your images, where they're positioned, where they're looking from, where the camera's at. Imagine if you're shooting some of these images with a camera, what type of shot are you going to have? Is this an extreme long shot like the mountains you saw? Is this a long shot? Is this a medium shot? Close up, extreme close up, right? Is it just the eyes? Is it just the mouth, right? A full shot, bird's eye view, rule of thirds. This is a really good one, the rule of thirds. Silhouette shot. If you don't want to actually see the details of the person, but just see the silhouette of them. Over the shoulder. This is kind of like that looking to the side view, right? Point of view, low angle, high angle, eye level shot. I'm using eye level shot a lot. Dutch angle, drone shot. I'm going to use this as well. And quite a bit of the things I have planned coming up and a candid shot. So those are the shot types. You have different cameras and they all have different things. So portrait, landscape, event photography with the Canon EOS. You have the Sony Alpha A7 III, which is street photography, sports, a wildlife, the Hasselblad, the Canon, the Nikon, the Panasonic, the Kodak, all these. If you want to do that nostalgic shot, that Kodak is going to hit the freaking ball out of the park for you. That's definitely something I would recommend. And then if you want to go to the cinematic cameras, which I highly recommend, Sony Sonalta, Canon Cinema, Phantom High Speed, the Black Magic. Let's go. Love Black Magic's the Ari Alexa Super 16 for that cinema style. And then if you want to do drone, you're all probably going to want to use that DJI Phantom 4 Pro drone camera. This is a really big one. You get aerial shots that are just absolutely gorgeous and in a cinematic version. So definitely check out those different camera types. And again, I have a link down in the description if you want to see these and you want to use these on your own. All right, lighting, another beautiful thing to be able to implement backlighting and moody lighting and just all the neat things you can do with lighting. Try these out, try different images. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Maybe post these images on Instagram or whatever site you're on and tag me in the images. I wanna see what you guys have created off of this prompting training. Let me know down in the comments and make sure you introduce yourself. You got chaos. So this is where you're gonna take it from zero to 100 and it's gonna increase the abstraction. If you go to 100, your images are gonna be really abstract. I mean like, oh, like, whoa. I try to keep this to a minimum. 20 is usually about the threshold I like to do because it gets really crazy, anything over that. But zero to 100, you could do 25, 30, 35, 40. So just really important for you guys to check all that out. All right, the next thing here is your negative prompts. You wanna make sure you're using negative prompts. Negative prompts are really important for removing things out of your images. I did one earlier where I had to get rid of the berries. You can get rid of fog, you can get rid of people, you can get rid of cars. You can get rid of all kinds of things out of the images that you don't want there, right? So if it generates something and you don't want something in the image, just regenerate it, put the negative prompt at the end, and it should do a good job of popping that thing out of your image and taking that out. Aspect ratios, you guys should know all about this. This is kind of a basic thing. You can use 18 different aspect ratios here just right out of the box, and there's almost no limitation to what aspect ratios you can use. You can come up with your own if you want, but this is really important to use the right aspect ratios for your images. What I'm using here and most of my images is 16.9, or I'll use 9.16. I don't think I've ever used any one of these other ones myself because then I can always adjust them and edit them if I want later on. Um, you have your stylized, your stylized 100, 
all the way to 1000. If you want to keep it very basic right out of the box, you're going to do that stylize of 100. If you want to make it crazy, you're going to go to that stylize of 1000. You can go really, really beautiful. I find that I get the best images when I'm using stylize of anywhere from 600 to 1000. All right, your multi prompts. Remember when I was talking about those colons? This is where it gets really fun. We're getting towards the end of this. Depending on where you put your colons, the colon colon, it's going to totally change up your image. And a good example of that is the chocolate pig. So I'm doing a fancy colon colon chocolate pig statue. This is what it gave me. It gave me a fancy, right? The emphasis was on fancy chocolate pig statue, right? I put that all there. Then I was able to create the same image and I did fancy chocolate pig. That was the basic focus of it when the statue is at the end. So you have statue by itself. It knows that the statue was the key thing that I wanted to pull out of this. So it made me a statue. It wasn't just about the chocolate pig. I got a statue that was a chocolate colored that was fancy. I did get a big old chocolate pig up there in the right hand corner. That's a statue, which is really cool, which is a little bit different from that. But all of these are just typical pigs, right? That are fancy versus a statue that is chocolate, right? So this is a big difference between the two, depending on where you place those colons. This is the multi-prompt that you need to be using and taking into consideration when you're writing your prompts. All right, permutation prompts. And this is one of my favorite things that I learned. This is one of my secret strategies. It allows me to create a lot more images and give me a lot more variation right out of the box. So I have a cinematic scene of a space movie, daytime, nighttime, lunar eclipse inside of those little brackets. I don't even know what those brackets are called. I'm not a pro, but I know that uh, as far as creating like, you know, those little brackets, but I know what those brackets are, what they look like. I don't know what they're called, but they're shot on a Sony Sonalta camera. And so what I was able to do is I was able to generate four images for daytime, four images for nighttime and four images for lunar eclipse. And let me show you, look at that. This is going to create three commands, three different different prompt commands all at once. So you're going to get literally 12 different images if you do it just like I did. And you can change the scene. It doesn't have to be a space scene. It could be an underwater scene. It could be a forest scene. It could be of a woman on a beach. And it could be a woman with a red t-shirt, green t-shirt, black t-shirt. It could be a white logo, a black logo, a green logo, right? So you can change this up, but you're going to have three different prompts that are going to be produced all at once that are each going to have four images. So this is the daytime. This is the nighttime. And here's the lunar eclipse. Look how amazing that is. That top right one, blew my mind when I first saw it, especially with the reflections in the water and it shining on that like that. Like what I was able to produce with a pretty basic prompt, a pretty basic permutation prompt was absolutely incredible. So I definitely recommend you using this feature if you want something in different colors and different styles. If you want a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, and a motorcycle, right? It'll create three different prompts, give you 12 different images of all those. And I think you can use up to four different permutations inside of one prompt, which that's going to give you four, eight, 12, 16 images. So that's a lot of images that's going to create all at once. So you just got to keep your credits in mind so you don't blow through all your credits doing it like that. All right. So we covered all of the things here. Now I want to cover and just talk to you about the training summary, but I promised you guys I would show you how to do the face swap feature inside of this. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. But as a summary, I showed you guys the basic prompt. I showed you guys the beginner prompt. I showed you guys the advanced prompt, which was really neat. The multi prompt where you're putting the two colons and then the permutation prompt where you can create multiple images with one prompt, which is really cool. Major time saver, major ability to give you multiple options out of each of your prompts and something I'm going to be using a lot more even myself. So let's go over here and to the Finsight face swap. And let me show you guys how this part works. So I generated this image of this really cool fella here as a scuba diver. My prompt for that was scuba instructor with open arms floating in the ocean, looking at the camera, top front view in the style of Alex Petrick, uh, light indigo and white. And I had light, nice light colors, performance oriented, for finality, Carson Garbaugh, cut ripped, high angled, stylized of 1000. And that's why this thing looks so cool. So what you're able to do is you're gonna download, let me close this out. You're gonna download Insight Face Swap. You're gonna go to Google, you're gonna type that in, Insight Face Swap. You're gonna go to their website, download it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna import that into your mid journey. There's a specific tutorial on how to do that. Um, I'll help you guys do that in another tutorial, but I wanna show you guys here what you're gonna do once that's downloaded. And there's a step-by-step -step instruction guide on their website, so it should be pretty freaking basic and pretty easy for you to do. But you're gonna hit forward slash, you're gonna hit S and you're gonna hit save ID. See this first one right here, it pops up. You're gonna hit save ID. I'm gonna drop in a picture of myself. So I'm gonna go over to my promo photos and I'm gonna drop in a picture of me. It could be any photo of me. Like, let's just use this one as an example. I'm gonna say, Mr. Boy Cell 3. I've actually already uploaded this image. And when I hit that, I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna save that image inside of there. Then what I'm gonna do, let me just get out of here. Let me just show you guys. Once I've done that, now I'm gonna go back to S. I'm gonna hit swap ID. Now I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna have me put that little name in there. So I put Mr. Boy Cell 1 because I'm gonna use my Mr. Boy Cell 1 and I'm gonna drop an image in here. 
And let me just find an image inside of my mid journey art that I can use to swap my face with. So I'm gonna put my face on this guy. Okay, so I'm gonna take my face. I put the Mr. Boy cell in here, hit enter, watch what happens. Holy moly, look at that. It literally took my face. I did a pretty good job too. This is what you do. This is how you do this little bonus trick. Uh, I did this for Haley. I've done this for Christy. I've done this for a lot of clients. I could show you a few of my images that I've done here. Let me just show you guys. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna show you a few of the ones that I've done. Go back to my mid journey art. I've created a lot of different images. So I created, that's the original. This is with my face, right? Let me show you another one real quick here. This is the original. This is the one with my face. Wanted to show you guys this feature. I hope this training was super powerful and super impactful for you. If you guys need anything else, I'm gonna be doing, unless I get feedback from you guys, I'm probably gonna do a training on each one of these five different prompts individually so we can go even deeper. If you guys wanna go deeper with me inside of Mid Journey, drop a comment down below. I have a lot of fun doing these. I wanna do more of these. And make sure if you haven't already, check out the Instagraphics Pro Network. There's a link down in the description. You, It's free to join. There doesn't cost anything. I have a circle community that's free as well as the Facebook community that's free. All you got to do is click the link down below. Make sure you fill out all the questions or I can't let you in. And I really appreciate you guys. If you're a web designer, graphic designer, motion designer, I want to do community. I want to do life with you guys and help us all level up in our health, wealth, and relationships. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.